Hey guys, Chris again from ClassicVWBugs.com, but in this tip, I want to talk to you about engine detail. Now, a lot of people email me all the time about, you know, Chris, how do you get your engine looking so clean, and you know, what do I got to do to, you know, uh, on an easy way, can I, you know, can I detail my engine, you know, without taking the motor out, you know, and things like that. And I, I kind of respond to them saying, you know, you could detail it if it's if it's not so dirty in the car. Sometimes you can use a little like tire wet or Armor Oil and shine up the tins a little bit, or you get some engine degreaser, spray the engine down and then hose it. But if you really want to have a good show look, I do recommend removing the motor. And right, what I'm going to show you here is uh, we're, uh, we took a motor out of a car now uh, that we're looking to detail. Um, and it's just a daily driver car, but I still like my engines to look clean because uh, when you have a clean engine, it goes a long way and uh, it shows a lot of attention to detail. And if a customer or somebody who wants to buy your car uh, sees a clean motor, uh, they feel like if you put attention to detail onto the motor, the rest of the car probably has a good sense of detail as well and attention. So um, I'm going to get behind the camera and then I'll start showing you some of these, uh, these tins that I painted up and uh, what we did to the motor to get it looking sharp. Okay, so here's this motor that we took out of the, uh, the bug that we're working on right now, the daily driver. Um, as you can see, I mean, there's still some grime on it. Uh, we did clean this off uh, tremendously. This thing had a lot of grime on it. This thing had a lot of mud and dirt. Um, it was sitting outside for a while. Uh, before we even did this though, we took a compression test on this motor to see if it was even worthwhile to go through what we're going through right now. Um, and this thing came out at 150 foot-pounds uh, per, uh, per cylinder. So uh, that was really good. So, But what we did was we bought some engine degreaser from AutoZone where you can get like degunk or even some carb cleaner to a point. But engine degreaser is good because you can soak the whole motor. And you want to be, before you do anything, you want to be able to get some rags and stuff them down the manifold holes so you don't want any water or any uh, any dirt or debris to go down into that motor. Do it on both sides here. Um, if you didn't have your distributor on, you could put a, a rag in there. Uh, same with fuel pump and, and, and whatnot. So, but uh, what we did was you spray it down with degreaser, let it soak for a good 15, 20 minutes, and then you hose it down. If you have a power washer, that's even better. That'll get it off. If you have a power washer that has steam, that's even, that's even better. Um, we don't have that here, so I just had a hose and we hosed it off so some of this grime and oxidation that you still see on the block I'm going to get in here with a wire wheel or even like a, a wire brush kind of like a toothbrush to clean it all off um, you can use that product that I spoke about once before uh, called Weenol to put on like the caps of your uh, fuel pumps or on your vacuum advances here and you can clean that off and make that look nice and shiny um, definitely better the way it looked uh, when it came out of the factory so uh, but we're going to keep working this motor. Uh, here's the valve covers here. We're going to probably pop these off, either uh, put a wire wheel on them, or if you have access to a sandblast unit, that's even better. Uh, there's some uh, units out there that you could probably pick up uh, from Harbor Freight or whatnot for a couple hundred bucks, and you put these units inside a uh, sandblast unit, and you sandblast all that grime off, and that's even better for you. But again, if you're on a budget and you got to do whatever you have at your house, this is the best thing to do. You just get a uh, you know a wire brush or wire wheel, clean all this stuff off, get some engine degreaser, and hose this motor down. I mean, one thing else we'd like to point out is when it comes to our build a bug projects, when we're completely rebuilding these motors from ground up for projects that people sign on to, um, we we'll usually send these cases out to uh, a machine shop, and they put it, the block in or the heads even into a, like an oven, and it bakes. And it gets all the grime and grease and, and mud and dirt off. And it's also a good opportunity if you're rebuilding the motor from ground up, where if they do put that in the oven, you can see if the engine has any stress cracks or corrosion. And if it does have anything like that, you basically either want to, you know, depending on how severe it is, probably steer clear from, uh, you know, rebuilding the motor and just get a new block. Okay, so as you can see here, I took off all the tins from the motor. This stuff was kind of rusty, kind of grimy, kind of muddy. Um, and all I used basically was uh, just Rust-Oleum's Painter's Touch. Um, you really don't have to go high heat for the tins. If you want to, they do sell a, a jet black uh, high heat engine paint, uh, also by Rust-Oleum. Uh, but I haven't had a problem using uh, anything like this. Uh, when it comes to the you know heat boxes, like I did here, I scratched these down again. Again, I used a wire, a wire wheel on my drill 
and I just kind of got all they used to look like this and I put the wheel on them and I got them nice and smooth and then your uh, exhaust stuff your mufflers your intake manifolds uh, heat boxes things like that I always hit with the 2000 degree Fahrenheit high heat primer um, it's not very shiny um, they do have some shiny paints on the market I usually try to get the shiny ones for the manifold um, but for the muffler and the heat boxes I just kind of shoot these with uh, you know the 2000 degree paint and I haven't had a problem seems like if I did 1200 even uh, that was okay but I still started to see the paint come off um, and this is also a great time like I, ha I have a manifold video uh, that you can look up you can test out your manifold and check your heat risers if you have if you blow some air through here and your heat risers are clogged and you don't get air coming out the other end this is clogged and it's always gonna act as if your motors uh, running cold all the time and it's not good for it so what you're gonna want to do is like I showed in the video we drill through the uh, the manifold and uh, get all that carbon out of there that gets hard as a rock so um, you're going to want to do that. Uh, you could either use, like I said, JB Weld or have somebody weld up the hole for you. And then uh, you should be good to go for that. Back to the tins over here. Um, basically, the, the fan shroud, I put a little uh, light sandpaper to it, wire wheel, that sort of thing. Um, just paint everything up. I mean, this is a gloss black, as you can see. From the factory, it was more semi-gloss. So depending on how you know original or how to the you know uh, precise you want to be you know is, is up to your taste um, I do find after you paint it with semi gloss um, that looks just it looks fine um, when I paint it with the gloss um, when the engine heats up over time I mean this glossiness will kind of tone itself down a bit um, so it won't be as shiny um, but there's even people that depending on your budget they send these tins out They'll send the pulleys out to get powder coated, uh, where the, the tins are actually, you can get these all sandblasted down to a smooth surface, see if there's any rust or corrosion as well, and then they get them powder coated, gloss, semi-gloss, or whatever you'd have, or whatnot, and you won't have to worry about any paint fading away or, uh, and, and, and things like that. So, um, makes the motor look real good, uh, especially when you got a freshly painted tins and things like that. Now, like I said, when you, when you break apart your motor, make sure you get your bins out and you want to be able to categorize, you know, the certain sections of the motors in different bins and put your nuts and bolts that go to certain parts of the motor in bins. Uh, we're going to clean up also the generator, test it out, make sure it's putting out, uh, uh the vaults and, uh, probably paint up the outside as well. So uh that's basically it when it comes to the tins and uh yeah uh, give it a shot like i said depending on how fine of a detail you want to get to you know this is a driver car we're putting it into so this is going to look real nice for a driver okay so here's my 55 bug and this is the 36 horsepower motor that we rebuilt and, and put into this car um and basically what you see what we did on the bench is what we did to this car uh to, to this motor uh, we just painted up the tins. I didn't do any powder coating at all. Um, you know, when we had the block out, uh, everything was steam cleaned for the block. I bought, uh, we, we rebuilt the heads. I bought new piston and cylinder kit. Um, cleaned up the carburetor and, and whatnot. So, um, you know, this is what you can do and uh, to make it look real nice. And here's another example here. This is a later bug, a 67. Uh, that also has a very nice looking engine compartment um, as you can see here sometimes like on the air cleaner it might just be getting a little dull you could either put um, some armor all on that I mean I even spray some tire wet on my motors to make it look shiny if you're going to a show and you want to show it off uh, that's a perfect uh, little spray that you can buy uh, to make it look good um, you know what else and if you don't have that stuff what else works really well is WD-40 um, WD-40 works wonders on many, many things and makes things look shiny. So uh, this is another example. Eric, my good friend Eric Shoemaker uh, from San Francisco. He's uh, into the bug like me. And he's been restoring these air cleaners. And he has them online and they look fabulous. He takes the clips off. He paints the clips. Does the whole, uh, I call it the helmet. And uh, makes it look real good. It's the oil bath air cleaner. 
um, and they're, they're really looking sharp. So if, if you want something that's uh, professionally done, uh, Eric's demand for uh, air cleaners. One other thing that's great when your motor's out of your car while you're detailing it is to not only detail the motor, but also detail the engine bay itself. Um, if you have a ratty tar board and it's all torn up and you know you can use a new one, go buy a new one. Definitely get a German tar board. Um, some of the th very thin tar boards that are on the market today, the real cheapo Brazilian, uh, I do not recommend. They get very soft and and loose while the engine's running in the car. And we've had plenty, we've had experiences where the tar board itself back here gets so loose that it starts to get sucked into the fan. And when you do that, now you're starting to overheat your motor. So I do not recommend that. If you want to get a good tar board, um, definitely go with a German tar board. Wolfsburg West makes a good tar board. So uh, I would definitely recommend doing that. But again, as your motor's out of your car, it's a good opportunity to change your engine seal, um, check your wires, make sure everything is, is, you know, up to snuff and, you know, don't want anything frayed. It's, while you have it out, make that bay look as, uh, as best as it can. I know this looks like a, a lot of hard work to make to some. Um, yes, it does take some time to do this, this sort of detail, especially if you have some real, you know, corrosion and oxidation on some of these tins or your motor itself. But in the end, it will increase the value of your car. And like I said, the more detail you have into your motor, the more detail uh, people will look at the co your car in general and say, oh, there's a lot of attention to detail uh, throughout. Um, so I, I recommend doing this. It makes the car look real nice. It might be a couple days you know, while you're doing it. You know, Let the paint dry overnight. Let it cure. Because uh, if, if you spray it up and then you start touching the fan shroud while you're installing the motor, and then when it finally dries, um, you have fingerprints on your shroud, and that really doesn't look too good. So, <laughs> But um, yeah, this is what it takes. Okay, guys, and that's that tip for today. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, please do not hesitate to contact me at chris at classicvwbugs.com. Also, take a look at my good friend uh, Eric Shoemaker's website, 1967beetle.com. Uh, Eric is just like me. He went to school for art and got bit by the bug you know, early on. And uh, now he's got a 67 Beetle that was passed on from him, from his grandfather. Uh, so definitely check out his website, 1967beetle.com. Eric is actually restoring the old school air cleaners for your Beetle. Uh, a lot of attention to detail. He's painting them up. He's painting up little clamps and whatnot. And uh, they look sharp. So check out his website. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. All right. Uh, take care. ClassicVWBugs.com. <laughs>